Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna with Hasna's Nat Me back with another video of making your anatomy concepts super simple so do not forget to subscribe to my channel let's get right into today's topic today we're going to study about the inguinal canal some parts of the conjoint tendon and premaster muscle so before i go ahead and explain all of this to you i'd like to give you a brief outlook on what exactly is happening on the lower abdominal wall so let's suppose we're talking about the left side what happens is we all know the layers of the abdominal wall i want you guys to revise it it all begins from outside the external oblique then is the internal oblique the transversus abdominis the fascia transversalis the extra peritoneal connective tissue and finally you reach this line this is the peritoneum deep to that are all the organs right this is the left side i want you all to remember that the hip bone has an anterior superior iliac spine the most anterior most part of the iliac crest and there is a pubic tubercle lying right here so this is the pubic tubercle all right one is your pubic bone and that is your ilium bone so what happens is from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle runs an important structure known as the inguinal ligament this is the medial part and this is the lateral part now let's talk about the story that occurs above the inguinal ligament let's suppose that we are starting from the deep layer the deep layer as in the fascia transversalis this is the fascia transversalis about 1.2 cm above the mid inguinal point was an important structure which was called deep inguinal ring it was basically a defect or opening in the fascia transversalis let's bring all the layers on top of this there was a transversus abdominis muscle then there was internal oblique then came the external oblique the superficial most layer had the superficial inguinal ring just above the pubic crest and it was a triangular opening so i hope you remember this is a superficial inguinal ring what is the point of this deep inguinal ring and the superficial inguinal ring anything that passes from here to the superficial side they are basically entering an oblique intermuscular passage which begins from the deep inguinal ring and ends at the superficial inguinal ring this oblique intermuscular passage is known as the inguinal canal so this is the inguinal canal moving from the deep side to the superficial side and coming medially all right and it runs between the deep inguinal ring to the superficial inguinal ring it is approximately 4 cm in size and is larger in the males than the females it lies on the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall just above your inguinal ligament this is your inguinal canal super important Now let's talk about these two terms for a while. We studied before that the lowest most fibers of the internal oblique and the transversus abdominis form the conjoint tendon. This is the lowest part of the abdominal wall, all right? This area. So when they're coming to the lowest part, this is the internal oblique and and along with the transversus abdominis, they get merged to each other and they arch over this inguinal canal. When they arch, the muscle fibers are finished now the aponeurosis of the internal oblique and the transversus abdominis begins as i've already told you guys that coming to the medial side at the linea semilunaris i have already told you that the aponeurosis of these flat muscles begin so right here after they arch their aponeurosis begins these aponeurotic fibers are known as the conjoint tendon this way we can actually study the boundaries of the entire inguinal canal so once again what is the inguinal canal inguinal canal is an oblique intermuscular passage lying on the lower part of the anterior abdominal wall between the deep inguinal ring till the superficial inguinal ring it's about 4 cm in size and is directed downwards forwards and medially so if i look at the human body this is how this is the direction of the inguinal canal of the right side this is the direction of the inguinal canal of the left side it's going from deep to superficial it's coming it's basically penetrating all the muscle layers so here it starts at the fascia transversalis this is let's suppose the deep inguinal ring all the way to the superficial inguinal ring it traverses all of these muscle layers this is the uh, transversus abdominis then the internal oblique and then the external oblique and that's how your passageway is created i hope you understand what is the importance of inguinal canal its content what is the content of the inguinal canal in males 
it's the most important the spermatic cord and in females is the round ligament of uterus what are the other contents of the inguinal canal remember these points the contents of the inguinal canal in males is as follows there are three arteries tac there are three nerves gia three other things the pdp remember this mnemonic right here the three arteries include the testicular artery the artery to the ductus deferens and the cremaster artery the three nerves include g for the genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve the ilioinguinal nerve and a is for the autonomic nerves three other things that are not arteries nor there are nerves these are the pampiniform plexus of vein most important the ductus deferens itself and then we have p for the remains of processus vaginalis so these are the contents of the inguinal canal including spermatic cord also you can say what lies in spermatic cord these contents lie or these contents constitute spermatic cord similarly in the females it's the round ligament of uterus what are the boundaries of the inguinal canal so let me explain to you few points the inguinal ligament at its medial most end it becomes the lacunar ligament the inguinal ligament has some parts that runs to the opposite external oblique aponeurosis this is known as the reflected part of the inguinal ligament and there is another ligament that runs from the transversus abdominis all the way to the superior ramus of the pubis this is known as the interfoveolar ligament now let's talk about the boundaries of the inguinal canal the anterior wall now the anterior wall differs through the whole extent wall of the inguinal canal is formed by what do you think obviously the skin the superficial fascia and the external oblique aponeurosis but in the lateral third there is a difference there are some additional structures in the anterior wall and these are what do you think internal oblique fibers so these are present in the anterior wall of the lateral part of the inguinal canal obviously on this side only the skin superficial fascia and the external oblique because these fibers end right here make sense let's talk about the posterior wall similar to the anterior wall the posterior wall also differs in areas in the medial third it's different and throughout the extent it's different in throughout the whole extent the posterior wall is obviously formed by the fascia transversalis the peritoneum the extra peritoneal connective tissue what about the medial thirds in the medial thirds the posterior wall as you can see here is formed by what the conjoint tendon obviously because see the internal oblique they arched above the inguinal canal and then posteriorly or more deeply they formed the conjoint tendon so imagine this is going from anterior to posterior or going from superficial to deep the conjoint tendon in the medial thirds forms the posterior wall and another thing that is present in the posterior wall is this reflected part of the inguinal ligament all right now let's talk about the roof of the inguinal canal the roof of the inguinal canal as you can see is formed by these arching of the fibers of the internal oblique and transversus abdominis and finally the floor of the inguinal canal is obviously formed by what can you see the inguinal ligament basically the inguinal ligament is grooved to accommodate this inguinal canal right so this grooved upper surface of the inguinal ligament forms the floor of the entire inguinal canal medially the lacunar ligament is also responsible for forming the floor i really hope that makes sense now let's talk about the conjoint tendon the conjoint tendon is formed by the fusion of the aponeurotic fibers of the internal oblique and the transversus abdominis their lower most aponeurotic fibers the medially conjoint tendon is as you can see is attached to the pubic crest major function of this conjoint tendon is that it protects what does it what do you think it protects this is the superficial inguinal ring so if there is any pressure in the abdomen you can see the a connection is formed between the abdomen and this part perineal part there is a connection being formed so abdominal organs can actually come out from here and all the way go into this conjoint tendon is responsible for strengthening and closing the superficial inguinal ring when the intra abdominal pressure is raised now let's talk about the cremasteric muscle 
we all know that the spermatic cord passes through this inguinal canal right so the spermatic cord goes to end up in the testes so the cremaster muscle is basically responsible for covering this entire part of the testes so what happens is the cremaster muscle are basically muscle fasciculi that are embedded in the connective tissue surrounding the muscle fasciculi and the muscle fasciculi plus the intervening connective tissue forms what you call the cremasteric fascia and the cremasteric fascia is completely surrounding your spermatic cord all the way till the testes muscle fasciculi are divided into superficial loops and deep loops here is an image that will help you understand the cremasteric muscle so over here you can see this is the inguinal ligament this is the arching fibers of the internal oblique with the transversus and this is forming the conjoint tendon as you can see this is your spermatic cord and surrounding the spermatic cord is the cremasteric fascia and what is the cremasteric fascia combination of the cremaster muscle with the intervening connective tissue so the superficial loop is this one we can see obviously more superficial superficial loops arise from the middle third of the inguinal ligament whereas the deep loops the loops that go behind the testes come from the medial side what do you see on the medial side the pubic crest the pubic tubercle and this thing, structure called the conjoint tendon from here come the deep loops of the cremaster muscle basically going to completely surround the testes and their function is to elevate the testes another thing that the cremaster muscle does is that it protects the superficial inguinal ring when the intraabdominal pressure is raised cremaster muscle is supplied by the genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve i hope you remember that this was a content of the inguinal canal an important part of the cremaster muscle is the cremasteric reflex we all know the thigh lies over here this is the medial part of the thigh if you ever stimulate the medial part of the front of the thigh this will cause the elevation of your testes which means that cremasteric muscle just performed its function on being stimulated by the medial part of the thigh why because the nerve that supplies the anteromedial part of the thigh is carrying the same root value as the nerve supplying the cremasteric muscle this is the first lumbar nerve nerve that supplies the anteromedial part of the thigh has similar root value to the genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve therefore since they have the same root value and this nerve is being stimulated so this nerve gets stimulated as well resulting in the contraction of the cremasteric muscle which will be shown by reflex contraction of your testes or elevation of the testes all right so i really hope you understood today's topics in the next video we will continue the discussion of the inguinal canal and talk about the various coverings and clinicals of it if you want me to keep making anatomy simple and easy for you to understand do not forget to subscribe to my channel thank you so much for watching